Hi everyone, it's Alice and today I'm going to recommend a bunch of books to you, all of which are under 200 pages. I feel like sometimes you just want to read something short, like you just want a short book, or at least I do, and I actually feel like there's something impressive about being able to write a great book with not a lot of pages, like it almost feels like its own kind of art, and I just wanted to recommend to you my favorites. Turns out I have a lot of them. <laughs> we have a bunch of classics, loads of translated books, some sci-fi, some mysteries, some like creepy type of books, and yeah, we should probably just get into it. Feel free to skip around and find a genre that you like because we have a lot to go through and not everyone is into everything, obviously. I've also tried to keep this to actual novels and novellas, like I haven't included poetry and things like that because I feel like those are usually short anyway. So these are like full stories but in short formats, I guess. We're going to start with the biggest section which is classics and I am going to try to whiz through these a little bit because they're classics and you have probably heard of most of them. We're going to start with one of my favorite books. It's Animal Farm by George Orwell, which tells the story of this farm that gets overtaken by the overworked and mistreated animals of the farm. And they set out to create a new society for themselves. And they have all of these great ideas of justice and equality. And it's a great foundation, but then time passes and things start slipping up a little bit and get a little bit difficult and they basically end up slipping into a different kind of totalitarian regime. I think this is really impressive because it manages to tell a really thought-provoking story in only so many pages and every time I reread this book I get something new from it and I feel like I understand it even better and I just think it's really really good and kind of like one of those books I think everyone should read. The second one I have is kind of similar actually but it's a little bit lesser known. It's Youth Without God by Erdon von Horvath and this is set in an unnamed country and we meet this teacher who in class one day says something that makes one of the students report him and that ends up with him being accused of sabotage of the fatherland. So you can imagine what kind of place this is. And it's again the kind of book that takes a look at totalitarianism and everything that comes with that. It's really fascinating and I have never really heard anyone talk about this book but it's really really good and I remember it took me a little bit of time to get into but once I was into it I just thought it was fascinating. Shifting over to something a little bit different, we have A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. This is essays that explore women as writers and women as characters in fiction, and it has that distinct stream of consciousness writing that Virginia Woolf had. And it's really interesting because when I read this book, Sometimes when you read classics you think, oh, this is going to be a little bit outdated, but I felt like a lot of the themes in this were still very relevant. And I remember when I read it, I kept thinking like, wow, this is really well put and it's very eloquent and I just think it's a really good book. It's also a good way to sort of try out Virginia Woolf actually because her writing style is very distinct and it's not for everyone, but this is quite a quick read obviously, so I feel like if you just want to dip your toe into Virginia Woolf, this is a great place to start. Then we have Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck and this is, not gonna lie, quite a depressing book. It's even set during the Great Depression and we're following two men in here who are ranch workers in California and they're kind of like an unlikely pair. One is a little bit of a smaller man and the other is like this giant dude but he has like the mind of a child and so they make a very interesting pair and there's a lot of interesting themes and discussions in this book and I feel like it's really worth the read even though it is very sad. Next I of course have to mention Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson which tells the story of this mild-mannered Dr. Jekyll and his evil inner persona Mr. Hyde, which I feel like is what most people know about the story if you haven't read it. And that is the main part of the story, but I still feel like it's worth the read because there are a lot of interesting things going on in here and it's always fun to just read like the original story, I think. And this is surprisingly like dark and just horrifying. Another kind of horrifying book that we have is The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. 
And this is about this man who washes up on this island and he finds that the island is being lorded over by this man named Dr. Moreau and he is up to some stuff on this island and there are all these weird creatures and there's a lot going on. It's very interesting though but it's also really creepy and it was like I remember when I read this I kind of knew what it was about but then I actually read it and I was like Oh, that's horrifying. <laughs> Last of the classics, we have one that I actually tend to forget is as short as it is. It's The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And this, of course, tells the story of Gatsby and his love of the beautiful Daisy. And this love takes us on quite the journey throughout this book. This is one of my favorite classics. I think it's really good and I think it's a very interesting story to discuss. And I just think it's amazing. The reason I keep forgetting that this is quite a short book though is that I have this edition and in this edition like the first third is just like an introduction that is really really long and the book is only like this part of it but it is quite a quick read and it's definitely worth it. It's a really really good story. In the next section where we also have quite a lot of books we have some books translated from Japanese which I've read quite a lot of. I really like reading books in translation and I really like reading books translated from Japanese. Like I really love a lot of them and a lot of them just tend to be on the shorter side for whatever reason. Maybe it's because I'm picking up shorter books or it's just because those are the ones that are translated. I don't really know but I have a lot of books to show you. The first one that we have here is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. This is a beautiful story about this professor who has a memory problem. He hurt his head like years ago and ever since then he can only remember the last 80 minutes. So he only has like short-term memory and obviously this causes some problems. And in this story we follow him and this housekeeper that starts working for him to take care of him. And this housekeeper also has a son who's there quite a lot. And the story is really about unlikely friendship and sort of unlikely connection and kind of like found family in a way. It's really, really beautiful and I just think everyone should read this. It's gorgeous. It also has quite a lot of math in it, which you would think is like not great if you're not into math, but I feel like it really worked in here. It was very interesting, like it was an interesting mix. The second one I have is a little bit more on the weird side. It's Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata and this tells the story of this woman who works in this convenience store and she works there and she's really happy there because everything just makes sense to her but she's being crushed by outside expectations because she's in her 30s and everyone is like don't you want like a normal life and like a proper career don't you want like marriage and kids and all of these things that you're supposed to want and so the story is sort of about the struggle of her sort of having found her place but outside expectations just differ from what makes her happy it's a really interesting story and we're following quite an unconventional character which i really really liked and I just loved like the setting of this convenience store. It was really, really great. Then we have Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. And this is a book that I read years ago and I still think about occasionally. It sort of explores grief and just life and it follows a main character who was an orphan and so she was raised by her grandmother but then her grandmother passes away and the book really explores her trying to grapple with that. I remember really, really liking the writing in this as well. I thought it was beautiful. Next, we have one that is one of my all-time favorite books, but I don't recommend it that much because I feel like it's one of those books that's for a very particular kind of reader. It's really not for everyone. It's Strange Weather in Tokyo by Furumi Kawakami. And this follows a woman in her 30s who's kind of like lost in life. And then one evening she runs into her old high school teacher and they sort of reconnect and become friends. And it's about the evolution of this relationship. And it's one of those books where nothing really happens. Like there isn't really a plot in here. It's just these characters going around eating all of this food, <laughs> which sounds really weird. And it is a little bit weird, but I just loved it. I thought the vibe was just amazing and 
I loved reading about the characters and the food. So good. Lastly, for the Japanese translations, we have a book that I read quite recently. It's Days at the Morosaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagisawa. And this is a book about this woman who finds out that her long-term boyfriend is marrying someone else which is obviously heartbreaking. And they also work in the same place. And so she just has to quit because she can't deal with it. And so she's kind of lost, but then her uncle comes out of nowhere really and says, you can come live above my bookshop if you help out in the bookshop. And so she goes and the story is about her not only discovering books and this like bookshop in this little village of bookshops, but it's really about her coming back to life and it's just so lovely and the setting and all of the characters that we meet in here i just i just loved it moving on i have a couple of sci-fi books and they are both science fiction but they feel like they're in sort of opposite ends of science fiction they're very like they have very different tones. The first one is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. And you may have seen this floating around. It is quite popular these days, I feel. And it's one of those books that a lot of people mention when they talk about cozy fantasy and cozy sci-fi. And that is very much what this is. It's set in a world where robots gained awareness centuries ago. And when they did that, they decided to leave humanity behind and to go live in the wilderness. And so they did. And many, many, many years later, we meet this tea monk who decides to go on a little bit of an adventure and ends up running into one of these robots. And no one has seen a robot in so long. It's a really sweet and lovely book and quite philosophical in a way that I really, really like. The other one that I have is completely different. It's I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman, which tells the story of a main character who lives in a bunker in a cage with 39 other women. And they're constantly being guarded by these men who never speak to them. And they're just stuck there and no one really knows why they're there. They don't remember how they got there or what their purpose is. And then one day something happens, which changes everything. I don't want to give too much away. I feel like the best way to go into this book is just blind. Like if you think it sounds intriguing, just try it and go in completely blind and see what you find. This is one of my favorite books that I've read this year. It's like it kind of blew me away and I still think about it a lot and it's just very unsettling. Then we have a couple of mystery slash horror type books. The first one being You Should Have Left by Daniel Kelman. This is the story of this man who brings his family up to this cabin in the mountains and they're gonna stay there a week and he has this journal and he's journaling through these days and it's becoming clear throughout his journal that something is really off about this house something is not right and yeah again i don't want to give too much away because i think that you should just go into this blind as well i do know that there is a movie i haven't seen it and i read this not knowing anything and i thought it was really really good again kind of unsettling i will say though this is kind of horror but i am not a huge horror reader because i get freaked out very easily and this is very much more that kind of eerie like horror if that makes sense. We also have Coraline by Neil Gaiman which tells the story of this young girl who moves into a new house with her family and there are all of these doors in this house but one of them is locked and they can't open it but on the other side of that door is a mirror world where eventually obviously this main character makes her way there and everything seems marvelous there until she realizes that it's not. This is almost like a modern classic at this point, I feel. It's really good, kind of creepy, and my edition is also illustrated and some of the illustrations are just kind of terrifying. This is just a rat, but some of the characters, like the drawings of the characters are quite creepy. Next we have some books that I'm just gonna bunch together under a fiction category and here we're starting with Tin Man by Sarah Winman. This tells the story of two boys who become friends in childhood and it's just the two of them and they're discovering the world together and they're really really close 
and eventually they become so close that the friendship sort of evolves into something else. Then we meet them a decade later and one of them is getting married to a woman and the other one is nowhere to be found. And we just piece together the story and find out what happened to them. It's beautiful, but also very, very sad. So be warned, it is like one of those books that might make you cry, but I feel like it's so beautiful that it's definitely worth it. We also have this beautiful book. This is The Little Snake by A.L. Kennedy. And this tells the story of this young girl who, when she's young, she lives in this beautiful, vibrant city. And one day she meets this golden snake. And the story basically, we follow her throughout her life and in different parts of her life, the snake will visit her. And as time passes, this beautiful city falls into war and she's displaced. And so we're just following her and her little golden snake. This is beautiful. This is one of those books that I picked up just on a whim and I just loved it when I read it. And I feel like everyone should read this. It is also again a little sad though. So <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm reading, like I read a lot of books that are beautiful, but also kind of sad. And this is one of them. Then we have another book that I think is really underrated, but I loved it. It's Sometimes a River Song by Avril Joy. And this follows a young girl who grows up in this riverboat community in Arkansas. And her biggest dream is learning how to read because she thinks this will like afford her a way out of this life that she's desperate to get away from. I think this is beautiful. It has a very distinct voice because it's kind of like written in dialect, but I just think this is beautiful and it's super, super atmospheric and I just loved it and I wish more people would read it. Then we have another kind of weird one and again, kind of underrated. It's Man Tiger by Eka Kurniawan. And this is one of those books that I feel like you kind of have to experience because it's really hard to explain what it's about. But it's basically about these two families who are interlinked, but they're also tormented and they're kind of at odds. And then we're also following this character who seems ordinary, but actually has this magical tiger concealed within himself. It sounds really weird because it kind of is, but it's quite an experience to read this book. It is weird but it feels like very original and unique in a way that I really like. At the very end here, we have a couple of nonfiction books, starting with Seven Brief Lessons on Physics by Carlo Rovelli. And I feel like the title sort of explains the book quite well. It's basically like an introduction to physics. And I've always thought physics seems like this thing that I'm never gonna know anything about because it seems so complicated. But if you find the right books to read, you will be able to understand like the basics and this is one of those books that will help you do that. I think Carlo Rovelli is really good at writing these kinds of books. I've also read another one of his which was about time, which blew my mind. I can't think about that too much because it freaks me out, but it is also very interesting and fascinating and it's fun to learn new things. Lastly, we have one of my favorite memoirs, actually. It's Between the World and Me by ta Coates. And I read this years ago and I really need to reread it, but I remember I just loved it. It's basically a sort of letter from a father to a son exploring American culture and history. And there's a lot of discussions in here about race and life. And it's just so good. And it's really intimate in a way that I found really moving and I think it's amazing to be able to write this kind of impactful book and it's this short. That was the last book though in my pile of books under 200 pages. Now I'd love to know what your favorite short book is if you have one. It doesn't necessarily have to be under 200 pages but if it is that would be cool. I love reading the comments on these kinds of videos because I can always find so many new recommendations. Not that I need any more books but you know, it's always fun to find new ones. And so yeah, let me know what your favorites are. As always, thank you very much for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon. Bye.